Anyway, we'd like to say a very good morning to another guest of ours, Tengku Farah Rithaldin, who is the group CEO and co-founder of Scully Group. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to the show. Thank you. And of course, uh, once again, we have back with us Dr. Jamal and Kuhusam and Ashraf. Now, um, we, we just want to pose one question to you. Your take on women entrepreneurs today in Malaysia. Well, in a good, a vibrant. I mean, uh, my mom is an entrepreneur. Okay. So uh, I, I take a lot of my entrepreneurship guidance from her. Okay. And um, w women entrepreneurs are meticulous. And if you talk about the emotional, the EQ aspect, they're very good about it. I mean, they can relate to emotions and feelings. Uh, as opposed to the men, uh, it's very much uh, prim and proper. Just yes do or no, do yes. and sometimes heartless. Uh, so it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you know, the men, the, the men can learn from the women in this, the, in this aspects. But uh, sometimes the uh, you know, sometimes the women do need to learn from the men. Sometimes uh, being objective and so, um, to to actually discard the emotional elements yes, of agree, things. Agree, agree. Yeah. Yes, um, that's exactly what we were talking about um, earlier on the show. Now, coming back to 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 all four of you, I mean, all four of you are very very successful um, in what you do. Um, Dr. Jama, how did you do you begin and and um, your career path and mm. now, now that you're here today? Yeah, when I started off uh, by training, I'm a dental surgeon. Okay. Uh, graduated in 1991. Uh, opened a clinic in Subang Jaya. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still, uh, uh, what do you call that, in practice. Okay. And uh, somehow or rather, I didn't enjoy the industry after a few years, 1995. So I decided to do, go into business. Uh, did trading, uh, did uh, manufacturing. Okay. Uh, made some money here, lost some money there. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally uh, went into the oil and gas sector in 2002. Okay, and that's where your passion, and you found your passion. Well, the passion was there from the start, I suppose, uh, even from young. I always had this, uh, when we were in Form 3 last time, mm -hmm. when you have school holidays, mm -hmm. uh, we have three, two months, November, December break. Mm -hmm. So I and my buddy decided to borrow some money from the parents and open a small hot dog, hot dog, so clever. Style, you know, okay. the side of the road. Just to earn some to extra bucks. Buy your Nike shoes, that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. okay, so that's how you began. Um, of yeah. course, it's it's a lot of challenges along the way as Definitely. well, isn't it? Definitely. What about you, sir? How did you how did you start off? Well, uh, I was in the merchant banking business, and uh, we when we were in the investment bank, uh, we saw a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, you know, start from small and get their companies listed, and they they were at a different level altogether. And we wanted to do something new, and um, so we said, you know, if we're going to go into construction or property, there's all these datuks and tansuris already big there, so it's hard for us to compete. Okay. So we said, let's do something on the net, and we started a a search engine mm -hmm. way back in in 1997, and uh, we started from there, and then we never looked back since. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And um, Enku. Uh, I actually studied uh, computer engineering. I should do what the Gufar is doing right now. Okay. But uh, that degree is for my parents. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So I'm a, I'm a food trader. Very good Asian children. <laughs> <laughs> Very good indeed. Uh, so I'm, I'm a food trader, but uh, slightly bit different like what others doing. We don't export food to a buyer, mm -hmm. but we are sort of like a nano, I would rather say a nano Nestle concept. We operate ourselves in those countries, right, such as like right. Saudi Arabia, Thailand. Okay. And so that's what I do. Right. Okay. And uh, Ashraf, you're the, the baby among the group. You're very young, I understand. Stand, but you know you've um, very mature I must say um, what's your what's your little secret okay so basically like now I'm still studying while working for simplicity so <coughs> it's a I think it's a very good exposure because uh, it's actually my parents company okay so I get to see from every different angle from the execution part from the the, the bottom part which is like angka angka barang and stuff mm -hmm. like that to the board level to the top management level so I get a good uh, feel of the business altogether so it would be a lot easier for me to actually do business in future and mm -hmm. also I've like since I was young my dad would actually you know like give me some cash for <coughs> me to do some business sure. like some small small business so I think the interest uh, develops from there so mm -hmm. 
I think it's just perfect for me to just be in this uh, company and uh, learn as much as I can. How old are you, by the way? Uh, I'm 21 this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> the world is your oyster, boy. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our audience now are thinking, I mean, it must be easy because, you know, it's um, mom and dad's company. Uh, um, what do you have to say? I'm sure you have your own sentiments Yeah, about I mean, that. Of course, uh, if my dad would just give me everything, it would be easy. But then the thing is, he would ask me to work from the the lower level and like you from know go up show. slowly. Yeah, and then I have to go to different different uh, department. But of course, I think I'm very fortunate in a sense where I don't have to like you know at this age, at my age, usually people just started working and yeah. started just starting to get into the trying to save yeah. for their first country or yeah. something <laughs> like that. So in that sense i'm very fortunate and i think uh, i should take advantage of this yeah. opportunity that i have and actually make the business better and grow the business even to the next next level like sure. what is it public listed maybe you know mm, big yeah. dreams very good uh dr jamal what, what would you say has been your one of your biggest challenges along the way your obstacles um when i still first started business um by by training, I'm not an economist or an accountant. Yeah, from so dentistry to this. Yeah, so I mean it was a really hands-on thing. Mm -hmm. um, every, when you start a small business, you are the coolie, you are the driver, you are the packager, you are the finance guy, you are the marketing guy, you, and you have daily challenges okay. every day. Um, so it's it was tough. Uh, there was no track record. Um, Financing was difficult. Mm -hmm. None of the banks wanted to uh, support us in the, in the beginning, um, and also you. So we rely a lot on friends, okay. who are who are in, who was a good accountant. Then you ask them for advice. Mm. Uh, who was a good marketer? Okay. You spend time with them. So those were the early challenges that, we, that I faced. Right, right, right. What about you, uh, Tinku Faris? What are your challenges? Or well, obstacles well I think I think the first start uh, when we first started the company is getting our first customer and convincing them that we are uh, worthwhile competing against the bigger guys um, I remember I mean the first one of our first early customers was Bank Nagara okay and our first job with them was the 38 ringgit a month that's how minuscule the project <laughs> is uh, or the service was but it, it was such an honor for us to get Bank Nagara and uh, obviously we went around town told the other banks that Benagara was our customer mm. but little did they know it was only 38 ringgit a month <laughs> but um, okay. that helped other banks to actually try us and, and to actually have the endorsement of something yes big, yeah right? so uh, you know even though it's really small sometimes you know i tell the uh, inspiring entrepreneurs uh, that you know uh, don't start big i mean start small mm. get your very good customer at small and Bangladesh has been with us for a long time mm. and we're very proud to have them as our customer. It's not 38 ringgit anymore I'm sure. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay and um, Uncle Hussam, what's, uh, what's your biggest challenge that you've um, come across so far? Uh, the chal challenges I think it's evolved, you know, mm -hmm. like, well, those days and 1,000 is a challenge for you to raise up the capital of 1,000. Then it evolves to 50,000. Sure. And evolves to 100,000, half million, one million, and so on and so forth. So I would rather say today, my biggest challenge is uh, to make myself stay, stay driven. Mm. Mm. Okay. I have to upkeep my motivational level. And how do you do that? Oh, <laughs> a lot of things. Really? You need a good mom, you, good, you need a good friend, you need support, yeah. right. you know, the, 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 your, your ecosystem of support must mm -hmm. be very strong or else you, you just get rather drown. Right. So this is my biggest challenge right now. What, what's your top priority in life right now? I mean, you know, men, businessmen. Mm. I'm 31. I'm okay. still single. So your top priority is now <laughs> 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 Ladies out there, <laughs> you are single. <laughs> 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 I'm single as well. So yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> it's a big challenge for me to, to <laughs> make my, ma my mom happy. So, Okay. You know, because I'm still single, so... Uh, so would you would consider yourself as a very successful person no, already? Not really. Not but really. then there are other fields that you need definitely, to... Definitely, definitely. Everything is evolved, you know, like those days. Uh, I'm talking about the challenge, the, the priority and the, the, the dreams is become bigger and bigger mm. and bigger. So I, I don't okay. consider myself as successful. Okay. Um, and you, so what's your priority in life right now? Well, I think, um, I, I mean, we, we, we all have aspirations and dreams for our company. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want to 
leave behind the legacy that you built this company from your sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. And when you, well, we're not, we're not there all, all the time. I mean, I'm not going to be group CEO of Scully uh, for the rest of my life. And when we leave it behind to our successor, uh, we want the company to be in a good footing so sure. that they can take it to the next level. Okay, That's so it's, it's finding the, the person to actually fill in the shoes. Well, not really. It's finding the person so that you can give it to them in a very good stage mm. and, and you have all the trust with, to them and they can take it to the next level because there's no I mean the wheels are all, all the screws are all nicely tightened and and you know there's no squeaky sounds in uh, in the company and okay. so on so so we want to leave it in a good stage okay. that's a priority fantastic um, you, we talked about challenges dr. Jamal yeah. but how do you how do how do men in the business how do they overcome these challenges women I know we we rave and rant and we go and cry sometimes and you know <laughs> that kind of stuff and you know make things happen but what, what do the men do to overcome we right. still do that too I suppose whether it's a uh, challenge for women or men um, irrespective of gender uh, we are all human beings, mm -hmm. um, people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to address it in terms of you have to be very resourceful in how to address so practical. challenges. Men are so practical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, resourceful, uh, have a good network of friends to, to tap to mm -hmm. and, and share your problems. Uh, of course, time management is important. Uh, you have to also live your life balance. A wise man once said that a happy man will have seven Fs. Oh, what's uh, that? <laughs> Family, friends, faith, mm -hmm. fitness, oh. fun, okay. and of course finance. Ooh, we like that. So you oh. have to. So I, we try to go by that. Have kind you guys of got all, all that yeah. seven Fs? Oh. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any last words before I, I we wrap like this on? Like I, I used Please to do. have one 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 session where I was so down. My business was so really in bad situation mm -hmm. that time. So I, I was thinking like, I, I should quit and look for a job. Mm. Then the, I managed to talk to someone who was within the industry. And then when you have problems, don't talk to the wrong person. If you are in business, you should, you should talk to the businessman. I if see. possible, within the same industry. Because I used to talk to someone who's from government service. And of course, mm. you get advice from a different angle. Right. But once you get back to your friends within the industry, they, they will give you the right, the right answer. Then. Mm. That's how. It, you maintain yourself. Yeah, okay. I think like for me, sure. the, my support system is always family. Like, of course. I have like a great father and mother mm -hmm. to actually support and tell me what's right and what's wrong. And like there, you get to uh, form your own opinion. So I think a good family would actually make you a lot better, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. <coughs> well said, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you very much once again for, for coming on the Thank show you. and sharing all this with us. Women out there, I hope you're taking heed. We love you women entrepreneurs and we, you know, we want you to strive for even better. Uh, please uh, stay tuned. After the break, we've got so much more happening on Bella Mars today.